So this is an Inman piece. This is from the Windermere chief economist, Matthew Gardner. Beyond the headlines, what's in store for 2021? These are predictions, prediction mode uh, from, from an economist who's been around quite a bit. I think that I have to say, though, that um, if you are listening to this, I do encourage you to actually like click the link and read it because oh, I yeah. do. I am. I guarantee you, if you have not been asked the question, you will be asked the question about 2021. I mean, and these topics in particular, he hits on all the big ones. We're going to go through them. Uh, and we've talked a lot about like what IV Zellman has said, what Keeping Current Matters is saying. Uh, you know, a number, you know, uh, Lawrence Young, you know, uh, from uh, NAR. We, we've talked about all of these economists. We haven't talked about Matthew's insight. And uh, we're going to get into that right now. Yeah, I love it. And I think it's like it's it's chewable information. So, yeah, hopefully in the editing, we're putting all of these graphs Graphs. up. Yep. I like it when we do that. So let's start with mortgages. The average 30 year mortgage rate history and forecast. This particular chart is going back to 2016, where we're at 3.65, 2017 was four, 2018 was four and a half. That was, 2018 was probably mm-hmm. the worst market we've seen mm-hmm. in, in residential real estate. Who would figure four and a half percent interest rates? Uh, 2019 came back down to about four, just under four. Quarter one of 2020, three and a half percent. Quarter two, down to 3.23. Quarter three, down to under 3%. And here in quarter four, this says 2.83%. I'm seeing 2.75 right now. Well, I think I think it really depends on, obviously, your credit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, we, we mentioned this on a previous episode where Ivy Zellman said, listen, the rates are going to eventually go up. We talked about it with the vaccines. If the vaccines, and, and there's more Ooh, and normalcy. today was like the day one of UK. Really? Yeah. They, the, UK. Uh, patient, one, patient, patient one or patient A. Okay. 90-year-old woman. That'll help our... Uh, U.S. market for sure, but no. Eventually, we're gonna have the vaccine. I'm just letting here. you know. It's like no, no. I, I, I uh, big day. Appreciate that, big and day. we should be having our day one or patient one or whatever you want, patient zero, uh, very soon, soon. It sounds like so. So we're gonna get our vaccines, and as we get back to a place of normalcy at some point in 2021, as the economy st- starts to even recover more than it has, you should theoretically, to Ivy Zellman's point, and now. Uh, to Matthew's point, you should see these interest rates start to tick up. So uh, he's projecting quarter one to go up to 2.88%, not really far off of where we've seen here. Nope. Um, quarter two, two, over 2.9%. But in the second half of the year, he's projecting that we'll be at 3% in quarter three and, and about 3.08% in quarter four for the 30-year mortgage. Which is still which is still low. That's still... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those are still very low. Listen... Those are lower than quarter two of 2020. You bought this year. You maximized on that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I need to refinance. Yep. I, I thought that well, I was going to do it next year. We'll but. say it again. Refinance alert. Maybe we can get some flashing <laughs> sirens on the screen here. If you are over 4%, if you have clients over 4%, if you have friends and family over 4%, or really right now, because we're sitting at 2.7, really over 3.75, yeah. you should be refinancing your mortgage. Make sure you're educating your clients on that. Uh, that's probably we're gonna we've got a great marketeer coming up if you're making a higher in 21 you want to stick around for that uh but i think a, a marketing campaign that we could all be using right now is tom ferry said this actually uh in a really nice way he said you're not gonna it, say it nicely uh i don't think i'm gonna say it as nicely as tf oh, okay did. all right put out a piece that says are you going to be bragging about your interest rate in 10, 15, 20 years? Basically right. meaning, are you going to buy here in 2020, right. 2021 and take advantage of these historically low interest rates? Right. Will you be bragging in 10, 15 years to all your friends about your interest rate? Pretty good marketing campaign. You could play with the words there. Or you could listen to TF's uh, housing um podcast from last friday with with lisa chinati lisa yeah was i saw on. that i saw that was, it was a, a little a little little group sesh they had a little group session in there little group sesh all right uh forecast for conventional 30 year fixed mortgage rates in 21 so this is um he's got his windermere economics but he's got everybody in there fannie mae says 2.8 wells fargo says 2.9 freddie max says three uh, Fannie and Freddie, they just can't agree, huh? Clearly not, they're, but they're, they're always clumped together, off. you know? Windermere, uh, 3.06, NAR, 3.1, and Mortgage Bankers Association is the highest at 3.3. That's an interesting 
um, number there. So you've got what four out of six that are forecasting uh, the fixed mortgage rates in 21. The mm -hmm. average is going to be three or over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 10 year treasury. We talked about this with Ivy Zellman. Mm -hmm. uh, we're projecting here uh, or he's projecting that the 10 year treasury maturity rate history and forecast is going to go up each quarter of 2021, which theoretically would drive up those right. 30 year fixed. He's saying rates. that those maps sort of overlay properly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now let's go into category number two. So there's your mortgage mm -hmm. prediction from Windermere. Now we're into home sales. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody's saying what? What's this winner going to be? No. What? Put you on the spot there. Yeah, you did. This, this winter oh in residential God. real estate is going <laughs> to be the best winter ever. Is that what you're hearing? That's what I'm hearing over mm -hmm. and over again. This is the winner. This is going to be the best winter ever for residential real estate. Uh, Keeping Current Matters is saying that. Hmm. Ivy Selman, Lawrence Young again. They're all saying this. That uh, Like closings? In, in or terms pendings. Of sales. So pendings, yeah. Pendings? Yeah. Because pendings are different than closed. Yeah, pendings. Pendings, okay. Pendings happening. There'll be more pendings that happen this winter than any winter in the history of residential real estate. I guess it doesn't surprise me. I mean, yeah. everything's sort of been history of something this year. Um, but I, I mean, obviously, I'm still wildly confident for 2021. So taking a look at existing home sales, the for Matthews forecast for sales this year uh, was 3.9%. But sales in 2021 should be up by 6.9%. That's a level we haven't seen since 2006. Uh, so 2020 was actually higher. It was at 5.5. 2021, um, we'll see what happens there. But he's projecting 6.9%. They will be up. Sales prices. What's that going to do to sales prices? Okay. Um, this year has been very impressive. Mm -hmm. right? We would all agree here in Connecticut has been very impressive on, on how those sales prices have jumped. We finally came back to our 2007 numbers. Well, yeah, I guess. I do think that... Single family homes, yeah, not, I, not for condos. I do think though that um, appraisers were definitely keeping us in check. Yeah. I mean, that you know that was certainly interesting and some buyers having to come to the table with additional cash to like actually make it happen. But um, yeah, no, I think it's been... But, but our I, median price point here, at least anyways has come back to 2007 level which it took us 13 years well, that, so that so so th i think that's important though to, to preface because again i and again we're just talking really about connecticut because with the amount of On people right because with the amount of people that have been coming here you know they're obviously concerned about buying right now in this market because they're feeling like that we're in a bubble or that they're right. overpaying or but we've been what like i'm gonna say it we've been wildly healthy like yeah you know, we've been looking at two, you know, 2% increases, 3% increases. So yeah, it's going to take us so much longer to sort of get there. So, and again, he gets into bubbles. So I don't want to ruin that. I don't want to ruin second. that that part, but. Um, so the prices have been impressive. We should see sale prices in 2020 ending up 7.4% higher than we saw in 2019. Uh, this number is quite remarkable. And uh, looking at the forecast that he put out last year, he was forecasting price growth closer to 4% than 7%. So almost a double up there. But again, still happened. really like, it's not like we're talking about 20%, 25. I mean, you know, a 4% to me is still, is healthy. That's, that's a, that's a, yeah, a I mean, healthy yeah, steady. Yeah, that's right there. They're usually looking at 3.8%. Yeah, I mean, yep. so it's, again, we're not talking about, and, and I guess I'm saying this mostly because I don't, Again, we'll get into this in our next racket about sellers and keeping so, them. So 4% is healthy. What's happened here, and, and I'd love to know in the comments about your local market, what's happened in Connecticut is we've seen a 20% jump. I, I think in certain spots, homes. certain yeah. spots. Yeah, yeah. median, median uh, yeah. spots. All right, so here's the, uh, the deal. They're projecting in 2021, his projection rather is... Again, he's back to his 4% number. 2020 hit the 7.4. He's back down to 4.1 for 2021. So he thinks the appreciation will slow back down um, to a more more of what we're mm -hmm. looking for in a healthy market. 3.8 mm -hmm. year over year is, is kind of the number. Uh, and so just over but that. But if you 4. add 1. the two together, I mean, you're still talking about over, over two years, almost, you know. Yeah, 11% in right. two years. Yeah. All right, new home sales. Uh, 2020 new home sales went up 8%. And next year, he sees startups 
uh, by a very significant 16.4%. That so, does not surprise me at all. And I think that has mostly to do with the fact that we have such a, a lack of inventory. So um, buyers are really only able to build at this point. It's interesting though too, because I have tons of buyers that want to build and it's mostly because they know that their house is going to sell so quickly that they're apprehensive about actually listing their house because there isn't anything to buy. Yeah. We're getting into a new construction situation. They know when to sort of put the house in the market because yeah. they're able to then like, you know, do it, you know, 60 days prior to the house being completed. You better have a tight deadline. I don't love that strategy personally <laughs> because well, you just don't, if, it, if it's gonna take you a year to build, I mean. Oh, I don't think it'll take, I mean, it, it'll certainly happen in 2021. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, obviously just, you have to be realistic with it. But again, if there's nothing else on the market, yeah. I mean, it, it, but they need to sell. Like we're talking about families that are not fitting homes or people, you know, like there's, there's only so many options. Yeah. I just wouldn't say, you know, I'm guaranteed to get a certain number 12 months. No, from now, right? no, no, no. I, I hear you there, but I mean, good luck going into a multiple offer situation with a Hubbard. I mean... And so uh, he goes on to the next category with forbearances. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't address the one thing that is troubling a lot of brokers and their clients, and that's forbearance. That's the one thing a lot of, I would say, the national news outlets have done a really poor job, just like saying, there's this many people in forbearance, which means we're going to have a market crash because they're all going to foreclose. And that's basically what he says here. Right. Well, they're, they're grabbing a headline. There's 2.76 uh, million homeowners in active forbearance, and that represents 5.2% of all mortgages, okay? So it sounds like a big number, but it's 5% of all mortgages. For perspective, the, the number of homeowners in forbearance is down almost 2 million from its peak back in May. That's a drop of 42%. So a lot of people took forbearance as in an abundance of caution uh, because they had the ability to do it. And we've seen this continue. We've set, we have in the last couple of weeks seen it just tick back up a little bit. But for the most part throughout the year, and, and we can put this chart up here, mortgages and forbearance, it has been on a steady decline. Again, we've seen it tick up just a touch here. Uh, well, thank goodness November, this December. vaccine came though, because I, I mean, this winter, if we didn't have an end in sight, it may be a little scary. So here, here there's four uh, big bullet points, and this is a very lengthy um, But again, piece of very digestible, yeah. very, yeah. very digestible. As dramatic as the projections might seem, it's worth noting a few things. During the Great Recession, foreclosure filing spiked with 1.65 million American homes going into foreclosure in the first half of 2010. But this is well above the most pessimistic forecast for foreclosures next year, 2021, if you want to compare, mm -hmm. you know, kind of what happened back then. Uh, this is... Uh, and even if defaults rise dramatically, they'll still come in well below the levels we saw following the bursting of the housing bubble. Number two... As I talked about earlier, home prices have risen steadily since 2012, and then obviously even more so in some mm -hmm. markets like ours mm -hmm. this year. And homeowners have built up large equity reserves. We've talked about this that a number of times, equity. how much equity yep. people have, <clears throat> which is the total opposite of the situation we saw in 2008. If you're in forbearance right now and you're in trouble, knowing what homes are selling for in your area, right. aren't you going to test the market Absolutely. before you lose your home yeah, and, you and go back? You know, absolutely into foreclosure of course you are and with low inventory these these homes would if you put your house on the market it's going to get snapped up if it's if it's in a median price point or close to right um you, you know certainly the high end could be a, a little bit different because home values have seen uh, have been rising many homeowners uh borrowers. home home borrowers in forbearance will be able to escape the foreclosure by just selling, like we just said. Right. Uh, we know that there is more than enough demand and that they will sell to make sure that they get the equity out of the home instead of potentially losing it. All right, lenders, uh, number three, have no stomach for a repeat of the foreclosure crisis we saw back in 08. Absolutely. I am, today I am seeing lenders positioning themselves to use a more cooperative, less punitive approach to delinquent borrowers. Right. Well, that great recession though was because of the housing market. Cor it was because of the mortgage, mortgage market, right. for sure. So, I mean, we're in a very different situation. Yeah. I mean, we, we have lenders here that aren't even writing jumbo loans right and now. We have a uh, lender, Buffet, who actually has been on the, uh, we let him sneak on the real world one time. A while back, he wrote us or, or sent me an article. Let me see if I can just find it real quick. It has to do with um, bar, uh, self-employed borrowers. So let's see here. Where is it? Listen to this. He writes, you will... Um, 
Fannie Mae gets tighter with self-employed borrowers. There, I mean, everybody's tightening up really everywhere. Again, he, he can't yeah. even write jumbo loans right, right. now, which again, it's nice because that price is actually going up this year. But um, yeah, he won't, he can't even write a jumbo loan yeah. at this point. And obviously you can, you can still get a jumbo loan for in some instances. Of course, but, but, but his, in his situation, and, um, yeah. And so to see what they're going to do, and, and it makes sense if, if you're self-employed because of what's happened to the small businesses through the health crisis, that the banks are going to get even tighter on that self-employed uh, borrower. So mm -hmm. we're, we're not dealing with, with no. 08 lending practices. Number four, uh, many but not all of the owners in forbearance will not enter foreclosure because they will be able to catch up on their past due amounts by paying more each month. And some may be allowed to add these past due amounts to the to end the of the end. mortgage by length in its term. Obviously, everybody's situation is different there. Um, all right, final thoughts. Uh, housing bubble burst. He does not see that. I'll let you read through that. Uh, mass migration. He's still seeing a lot of people. Wanting yeah, but to he's move. saying that it's. But he's saying that it's not actually as big of a migration as as, as what Zillow says. Well, as what as what most are assuming. Yeah, cities are still pretty solid. And Zillow projects huge movement. So so he's a little less bullish on that for sure. Um, condos. I don't see the condo market collapsing across the country, though. I see significant issues issues in mar markets like Manhattan and San Francisco. Right. That obviously makes sense. Um, now I think like locally for us looking at the condo market, I, I see value appreciation happening because our single families shot up so much right, here. Right. Um, yeah. To get a two bedroom, you know, condo is like, like a buck 75 in some situations where man, that's like nothing. Yeah. Kind of, so, poof. so like, I think anything, um, 2.75%. Like I mean, hello, you're yeah. talking about like hundreds of dollars. It's going to be a local, uh, situation, but for sure. Uh, we've got, he's got one comment so far. This just came out. Excellent overview. I agree. It's an excellent overview. Excellent read. We're going to link that up. I highly recommend you reading it. Yes.